On the day of the Rebbe's funeral, I was in New York. I learned in yeshiva there. That day remained in my memory as a period of time in complete surrealism. I was there, and at the same time, I wasn't there. The Rebbe's talks were attended by thousands of people. Tens of thousands of people came to him for advice and blessing. His printed works were studied by hundreds of thousands of people, and his movement affected millions. His work went beyond the circle of Hasidim, beyond the Jewish community, and far beyond the Jewish world. The most frequent question that I hear about the Lubavitch movement is, what is going to be now? When will there be a new Rebbe? Why didn't the movement appoint itself a new leader? A Rebbe is not an elective position. There are no votes or committees that nominate a Rebbe. A Rebbe is a person who teaches the Torah and people gather around him and he becomes their life's mentor. They see him as a righteous man whose advice they can rely on with their very lives. A righteous person, a tzaddik, is not just an exalted metaphoric title. Various parts of the Torah, specifically the book of Tanya, describes who can be called a tzaddik, a righteous person. And there we see a clear definition of it. A Rebbe is not a CEO of a corporation. If a business's CEO is gone, then we need to find a new one. Say at Apple Corporation, there was Steve Jobs. When he died, they began looking for a replacement. Everyone knew that they will not find a second Steve Jobs, but someone has to manage the enterprise. No one can replace Steve Jobs 100%. Well, let's find something as close as possible. Maybe someone can be a 75% replacement. If this is the closest we can get, then uh, of course he's going to be accepted for the position. Someone has to run the company. With a Rebbe, it doesn't work like this. Either he is a Rebbe or he is not a Rebbe. A 75% Tzadik, a righteous person, is a 100% not a Tzadik. Mentors, teachers, Rebbes are described in the Torah as people who have a very deep personal connection with their students and their followers. In the modern Western world, unfortunately, the concept of such a real-life mentor is almost non-existent. The respect that, according to the laws of the Torah, we must give to our life mentor is in many ways similar to the respect we have to afford to our parents. In the Jewish law, a person whose mentor has passed away has to observe the rituals of mourning similar to the customs of losing one's parents. When we look at the Bavich movement right now, we know that we don't have a new Rebbe. But the Rebbe left an incredible amount of printed works and recordings of his talks in which he invested himself and his whole soul literally. Millions of people still find life's lessons in these words. The Rebbe continues to inspire his followers, people outside of the Jewish community and even non-Jews. No one can argue that the Rebbe's influence is seen today 
as well.